Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Joe Bryant, talking <laughs> live about losing tea. Does that ever happen to you? You're just losing <laughs> a hot beverage, you sit it down, and you walk around the house, and you're like, where did that one cup go? And this cup, this cup's easy to miss. It's my Doctor Who cup. This is the one I keep around the house. Why? Because it's square, it's blue, and I know when I don't have it. I'm not a person who has 15 cups laying around. <laughs> I went looking for it. It didn't get bad. You know, I wasn't checking like in the freezer because, you know, you go to your normal haunts when you lose something like that. You're like, maybe it's on the coffee table. Maybe it's in the breakfast. And like, mm -hmm. Maybe I put it out in the garage. No, 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 no. I had it. I dropped it in the studio when I came in here and lit everything up and promptly left it. And I rediscovered it right before the show when we went live. So I very mm -hmm. quickly finished off my lukewarm tea. It was quite delicious. But we got quite the show for you this week. I do want to give everybody a little bit of an update. This showed up in the mail. If you follow on Interfacing Yay. Linux, I keep a little thread of things that show up. It's called Friday Fire Mail. And I've talked about it a couple of times on the show. The Banana Pie open source smart router they sent me. I didn't know what they were going to send me because I didn't ask them to send me anything. I asked them, hey, man, what Wi-Fi module can I buy if I buy this board that's going to work? Because that Wi-Fi module on the right... I didn't want to buy because it's a hundred dollars. Mm. Right. Very nice. <laughs> it's the Wi-Fi <laughs> seven module. I'm like, I'm not buying that because it's too much. I'm going to buy the board, but I want to know which like little mini PCI express cards you guys have certified. Can you send me a link? They're like, don't worry about it. We're just going to ship it to you. Well, they shipped it to me. The reason I bring that up is I didn't know what I was getting. This is like a starter kit. Now the goal here is to build an open source Linux open WRT router. There's a lot of parts I need to order. I didn't know if I was getting a lot of parts along with this. So yesterday I was on AliExpress. This is the only place you can get a lot of these parts, you know, the case, the wires, the antennae yeah. and all the yeah. other things. And I got to like, I put that order together and got it pushed out. So uh, stay tuned. That'll be done after I finish the Rasda, which is on Yay. the desk in here because I'm playing around <laughs> with it, covering all the stuff that other people are probably not going to be covering on it uh and i will have the one thing i do for the interfacing linux patreon is i just give you my work in progress document that i'm working on it starts off with chaos information gathering phase and we're just getting done with that and we're going through the testing and i'm just getting started with the scripts on that so if you want to go take a peek and throw feel free to throw in a suggestion or two that's how you end up in the video with a credit right there not like in the comments like hey go back and try this no jill bryant you <laughs> and what can only be described as anger and rage destroyed no. <laughs> your steam deck doc oh you well, my old spiked <laughs> it out front and steve ran over <laughs> it with a car and it was struck by lightning and proceeded to be bitten by a cobra. So it is no longer functioning. Yeah. <laughs> and you decided to replace it, not with an official Steam Deck dock. I ended up getting one. Actually, this is it's a really, really nice one. Um, and it's called Kiwi Home Docking Station for Valve's Steam Deck. And I only found like three on Amazon that had DisplayPort out. And this one fit all my needs. <laughs> All right, coming to you up first this week, a little bit of news from a company. Uh, if you follow the Pine64 subreddit over on the Reddit, while well, that's still around, the uh, speculation has been like, what's going on with Pine64? Because they've kind of been radio silent for a couple of months. You know, people were even yeah. having problems getting replies back from like, you know, just RMA and like questions mm -hmm. and things going on. They're like, uh, are they still around? Is it safe to order from them? Will I even get anything? Well, they decided <laughs> to let the world know that they still exist. Yeah, yeah. So it, it actually has been since March that we've had an update from Pine64, you know, the maker of awesome Linux-based ARM and RISC-V devices. But in that time, a lot has been going on behind the scenes. And so with this update, they told us all about it. And one of the biggest announcements is that the Pi Note will be coming back. That's their 10.1 inch grayscale display e-ink tablet that I had been really looking forward to. And also Pine64 is bringing back the Pine Tab 5 tablet, their RISC-V based Linux tablet, which 
when originally released, had a 10.1 inch HD IPS display, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabyte flash memory, and a detachable back backlit keyboard. The Pine Tab 5 tablet is scheduled to launch this month. Woohoo! And there are updates to almost every other device in their lineup, including their popular Pine Phone and Pine Phone Pro and the Pine Soul soldering iron, as well as the Pine Time open source smartwatch. And there are also new additions to their Risk 5 SBC lineup, including the Star Pro 64 and the OZ64 and their ARM based Quartz 64 device line, the Quartz 640, which this one is cool because it's a lower cost version of the Quartz 64. The Pine Time and the Pine Soul probably have been uh, commercially successful for Pine 64, which is good to see those are yeah. still chugging along. Now, I want to talk about XFCE, speedy as a mouse, the desktop manager of Legend. Mm -hmm. All the cool kids use it because Wayland support. This comes from OS Technics. XFCE 420 YOLO aims to bring preliminary Wayland support. All right. Cool. I saw a bunch of news outlets running with this. The ones that even know what XFCE and Wayland are. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, well, well. Okay. 420 Pre 1 is going to be coming out next month, right at the beginning. And there's been some just that OMG Wayland chatter just going around. People are like, yes, Wayland support. What we're talking about here is genuinely preliminary Wayland support. Nothing more, to be clear. They don't even have a compositor working yet. So. Some initial work has been done, but it's not going to be usable for at least a year, probably more, definitely more. Keep that in mind. 420 will let you run some of your uh, XFCE components on another compositor, another Wayland compositor, if that's your gem. And if you're wondering, when are we going to get that release? In December. That's going to happen. And it's still like XFCE is the desktop manager that I use, good or bad. Yeah. And that should tell you everything you need to know about it. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Joe, you played around with the X Wayland variant like a lot of people have. Yeah. So I've been using XFCE4 via X Wayland often when I'm podcasting. And right now I'm on it right now for today's show. And it works pretty well, but you know, it has a, a few uh, glitches. But it will be really nice when it completely moves from X Wayland and using X settings to Wayland proper. I am looking forward to that. And then maybe the XFCE4 screen shooter app will start working correctly. <laughs> I have to use aftermarket ones because that doesn't work That's right that now. That list of <laughs> yeah. And when you talk about Wayland, you want to jump in like you're no, 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 no hate. Like we call it what it is. Like there's a baskets of like the little things like that with Wayland that will completely jack up a workflow for some people. But um, yeah, man, I, I'm glad it's yeah. there. And like mm -hmm. I said, KDE's got pretty decent Wayland support. So does, uh, you know, no, if you want to jump on that, if you're running X, XFC is yeah. probably still going to be your jam. And they want to make it very clear that like, that's where the development focus is going to maintain slow and stable. Now let's talk about a problem. <laughs> flash memory right I, I bought this on amazon just get this this is a samsung i mm -hmm. needed this for the uh, the rasda for just an experiment i got this and you know, 64 gigs small as i could find you know i was like do it can i get a 16 gig thumb drive i'm like no I'm like fine i'll take a 64 didn't work mm -hmm. had to unplug plug in you know, nice reliable stuff you know micro sd cards these things you don't know if they're legit or not do you Jill? yeah no so what is really cool then is that Raspberry Pi has just announced two cool accessories for the Raspberry Pi 5, including class A2 SD cards. Yeah, um, they're going to actually make their own uh, range of uh, class A2 SD cards um, of, for, that are low cost and high quality, which is really cool. This is the first time Raspberry Pi is doing this. so. Uh, that I think is a good move because they're yeah like Ven was saying there's oh boy I've tried cards too that that haven't worked or or won't you know initialize Linux when you know you flash it <laughs> so that's just annoying so now you'll be able to get official 
versions from uh, Raspberry Pi. And over at Canakit, you can actually get a 32 gigabyte card preloaded with PiOS for only $12.95, which is a really good price, and a 64 gigabyte version for only $17.95. And there is a blank one available at pieshop.us and at a fruit for only $9.95. The other accessory that's interesting that Raspberry Pi launched is an easy to install and used Raspberry Pi bumper. Yeah, it's a, a snap-on silicon base that protects the edges of your Raspberry Pi 5 and the surface you set it down on a lot like uh, cell phone when you bumpers. Want to throw it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's only $3 over at Canakit and other Raspberry Pi distributors. And it's also compatible with the Raspberry Pi Active Cooler. And, and this is nice if you just want something that's simple that, to protect your Pi, but you don't want to spend the money on a, a real nice case. The, this is a great option. Mm -hmm. That's good news. I love to see stuff like that. And it's good that, you know, Canakit getting SD, micro SD cards, is it's just a hassle. You don't even know what you're getting these days. The best you can hope I, for so is you true. got the right capacity. Yeah. You don't know if they're legit or not because the fakes are so good these days. We talked about mm -hmm. it. Uh, I forget the name of the application. Um, I brought it up on the show a couple of oh, months back to oh, verify. Oh, yeah, that you can test it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just got to do stuff like that these days, which is kind of sad. You know, it used to be you could get like the SanDisk. Those were like legit. Now you don't even know if it's a legitimate SanDisk until like, till you check it. And even then, all you can do is really confirm the capacity, maybe the write speed. So having something like that that you can get from Canakit or from Raspberry Pi, preferably like maybe out of fruit, down the road and just know that you're getting a legitimate thing that has been tested. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But I do Good have point, a then. little <laughs> bit of experience <laughs> playing around with SD cards because I haven't got anybody that had, uh, I really assumed a couple of people were going to jump in on the latest thing that I pushed out on interfacing Linux. And that is the Trackberry Pi. Raspberry Pi Trackmania server. What you really need to think about this is ultra low power game servers on ARM. I just mm -hmm. happened to do it with Raspberry Pi 02W using nice Box fan. 64. That was the idea. It was like, what is the least powerful thing I can come up with that I can just run a game server? Because we had, you know, tons of uh, game servers come out. Let's say from like 2000 to 2024. How many native Linux games have we got in that entire time? You know, 30? How many? Linux native game servers did we get? Dozens upon dozens. The problem is they're all x86. They're not going to run on your ARM device, but you can get around that with Box64. So I decided to make a Raspberry Pi do that thing, man, because I've seen a bunch of people using Box64 to play x86-64 games on ARM devices. And it got me thinking, why don't we apply this to game servers? Now, I thought it'd be fun to see if I could build a super low power, we're talking like two watt Trackmania 2 server using the Pi 02W. When I started this project, man, <laughs> I thought maybe, just maybe, I could get the Trackmania server just to like begrudgingly load. And with just enough patience, if I waited long enough, I might even be able to connect to it. You know, I thought if I could connect to it, I could drive around for a little bit and maybe go grab a fire extinguisher and put out the Raspberry Pi 02 because it burst into flames. Turns out that the little A53, quad core A53 in that little critter, not only works well enough to emulate x86 through box 64 to run the server, I can run a server controller on top of that, which means that I got a SQL database running in the back. Now you see what I'm talking about SD cards. You need a reliable one for this one. And it works great. So much so I've been using it for the last month for our Trackmania server which you can come play if you are a patron or a Twitch subscriber. Head over to Linux Gamecast, go to the Track Manias and thing, I've built the casuals under the home tab, get all the launch instructions, they're pinned in our Discord, and come play with us. This is a great time, and you can play on the Trackberry Pi yourself. And there's a gang of other Linux servers that I want people to get out there and try. You know, I just put this out there to get the idea in people's heads, get people thinking about it. We gotta scroll. To the bottom, over on Interfacing Linux, there's an example. I also use this as an excuse to document how to set up a Trackmania server because the internet was missing that for some reason. Had a good time doing that. Thanks, everybody, watching, sharing it, telling other people about it. Go play with it. You probably get a Pi Zero. 
this will run on a regular Gen 1 $5 Pi Zero. You're just not going to be able to get the server controller and all that other stuff, but you will get the server itself up and running. It's a great learning experience. It'll get you playing around with your router because you got a router. Learn how to do a little port forwarding. Learn how to do a little bit of basic network security. And it's a full write-up. Oh, yeah, go check it out. Yeah. Interfacinglinux.com. All right, everybody. That's going to do it for today. Hey, if you want mm -hmm. to come uh, party with us, linuxgamecast.com. I just got a new video up from the after shows in Linux Gamecast Weekly. We do that every Saturday at 8 p.m. right here on Twitch. Uh, we do some multiplayer, you know, after we do the gaming podcast that we've been doing for like 13 years. We uh, PVP'd some pixels that bled acid, and we were playing a little <laughs> bit of uh, Broforce, which was good. And last week's show, you know, we talked about Steam Decks, aluminum deck covers, and of course, Nintendo yeah, Swing people those are cool. out of existence. Mm -hmm. We do it all on the one web zone. If you want to uh, get some bonus things, join us on Patreon, support the show. I'll give you this show. You're looking at the runtime. You're like, man, I really wish I had like another 30, 40 minutes of that. Got you mm -hmm. covered. Uncut versions available, audio, video. Access to our, you know, you want to come play on the track, Barry Pie. That's great. I had somebody already ping me. They're like, hey, how come do I got to be a patron or a Twitch sub in order nice. to do that? And I'm like, it was open. I tried to open it, I think, three times now to the public. Every single time ended with predictable results on a live Twitch stream. With yeah, people, I with remember usernames. That. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. nope. <laughs> Can't do it. Hate to yeah. do it. Gotta do it. But... That'll get you access to the mm -hmm. Discord. You can hop in. Come chat with us. We got general chat just rolling 24-7. I'm in there. Jill's in there. Everybody else uh, mm -hmm. having our discussions. And uh, we'll put your names in the credits. All right. Time to cue the music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And roll those yeah, credits. Yeah, thank our patron. As many as I can. Our advisors are Theron. <laughs> Let's see how quickly I can read this. Barbrandt, Scott, Atomic, Mike, Drummer, Paradecki, We've got Turbo Tree Sloth, Empty, Cataclysm, Basil, Glorious Egg Roll, our Sea Monsters. Now this one, it's in blue, so it's really hard for me to read. <laughs> and our Death Notes. Um, so if you Leonardo. want to hide from something from Jill, just write it in blue. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> Blue's, blue text is hard for me to read. <laughs> oh boy, we have so many awesome patrons out there at all the different levels on Go Patreon. Go check it out. <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast and uh, grab the show, get the downloadable version, commercial free video version, all the other fun things uh, going to be throwing your way. Yay. All right, everybody. Have a great mm -hmm. rest of your week. Try to get up something Linux related. Pokemon with your Linux sticks, as I like to say. Yeah. Keep those Linux penguins marching. Bye-bye. <laughs>